you know, you mentioned her being a war hawk. I, I looked that up. You know, she she is pro war. I'm pro war. Um, but well, you're a warrior. <laughs> I, I, would, I would hope that our warriors are pro war. Right. Yeah. But as as an American, I'm not against I'm not against the wars that we are in. Hindsight being 2020, we can we can say mistakes were made. No comment. <laughs> oh, he didn't kill Bin Laden. Probably blame me for being an idiot, but and which you were, which we all were. <laughs> you have to make it to where crime doesn't pay. You have to deter crime, whether it's crime or terrorism. It's the same principle. You have to clash with supervision. You have to, or nothing will get done. Supervisors can't learn how to supervise, and you can't learn how to respect a supervisor without confrontation. It has to happen. <laughs> Do not take that out. JV team for life. Ron, imagine that. We're waiting on Brent. <laughs> Did you do your warm-ups? About to. All right. Vivek Ramaswamy. 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 Vivek Ramaswamy. I think it's Vivek, actually. Ooh. Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek Ramaswamy ate a whole pie. Just <laughs> Vivek Ramaswamy. Red, yellow, red leather, yellow leather. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Anti-Hero Podcast, part Delta Port. Beep. Welcome back to the Anti-Hero Podcast, part Delta Force, part Street Cop, all podcasts. Hope everybody had a great Christmas break because we took the week off, and, and I, I don't know how you guys survived without us, but <laughs> but uh, we have a... No, we don't want to say the P word. It's not, it's not political, but... It, I mean, we, there's no way around it. Okay. It's a political podcast. We're doing it. So um, <laughs> I'm your host, Tyler, owner of Refracted Wolf Apparel. Brent Tucker, owner of First Responder Coffee Company and First Responder Cigar Company. So with us today, we have former firefighter. Yes. And, and current legend. Current and, legend. And we have the same arm size. So, yes. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's just a small shirt. <laughs> yeah. we, I asked you to get a shorter stool for him so he didn't tower over this us guy's like, like that. Like, How tall are you? Uh, like 6'4", six, 6'5", four, six, six, if I'm wearing heels. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much you weigh? Uh, 280. 280. Were you this big when you were a firefighter? Uh, I was like 260. Because so, you, you're retired. You did yes. 20 years. I'm um, a stay-at-home dad now, full-time. Nice. I have Good three-year-old. Good for you. For you. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. That's the dream. I have two other boys. I like to call myself the Kingmaker because I have three sons. <laughs> Good. Your last name's going to be around forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my legacy, bro. My 13 year old is as tall as you. Yeah. And he's probably got you by 10 pounds, and he's only 13. Wow. Holy shit. You guys got great genetics. And my youngest, Bronco, is about this tall. And he's almost, he'll be three coming up here soon. Your son's name is Bronco? Yeah, that my youngest is son is Bronco. <laughs> is a king I name. love it. <laughs> king Bronco. King yeah. Bronco. His middle name is Bobby, so he's Bronco Bobby. <laughs> Bronco Bobby. So his nickname is Bro. So w- w- the way this all started was it was uh, because um, you were here doing business when we were about to shoot a podcast, and you and Brent just hit it off with talking about politics. Because, I was eavesdropping. <laughs> yeah, because Brent, me and Brent were trying to figure out what uh, you know current events and topics to talk about on the podcast, and uh, you guys just started like you know. And, and to be honest with you, I'm probably going to be on the on the bleachers for a lot of this one because politics is like baseball to me, and yeah. I'm just going to be like, I, I don't have you know, I have opinions, but I don't have a lot of facts. I actually like that because you're going to hear you're going to hear a bunch of facts and and numbers and statistics that you probably didn't know, mm-hmm. and we'll get you'll we'll get your you know your 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 reaction from it. Yeah, I haven't shared these with you before the podcast. We'll we'll get your, we'll get your your real reaction from from some of these mind blowing figures. Salacious, salacious. Look at the vocabulary. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean to be honest with you, I don't get into politics because once the once the election was completely rigged and our entire country saw the corruption, I was like, I'm out. And so now I think that well, our, we'll, we'll we'll see. I think our generation will see uh, the World War Three, and I think our kids' generation will see the collapse of our. Society. Just a little pushback on saying that the last election was completely rigged is if we go forward in time and we tell people that 
then it's going to encourage them not to want to vote because they're gonna be like, it's rigged. Is why, it? That's why how the I feel. Fuck, why the f- exactly? Yeah. Like you're disenfranchised because you feel like it was stolen from you. But what did uh, what did Time Magazine? They called it. There was the secret cabal, and they just uh, like reinforced, you know. The election, what, like the out, like what was going to happen by like censoring people on social media and stuff, so that you couldn't have an opinion. And I think that really had something that that and the universal mail-in vo- voting. That's that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a stop. huge problem. And the problem stop. with that is that came into because of COVID. Yeah. Well, there's no more COVID, so why are they still going to do it? Yeah. And in some states, like, I don't mean to get on a stump but i mean it's like like ballot harvesting is legal in some states what's ballot harvesting ballot harvesting is where it's legal for you if you lived in new york city you would you could go to like a project building and you go through and you're like did you vote and people are like no i didn't vote and they're like there's your ballot right there just go ahead fill it out and i'll turn it in for you and they can collect all the ballots in that whole building and then they go to the ballot box and they turn them all in Right there. Yep. That's called, and but it's only certain states. I don't know offhand which ones it's legal in. But that's the difference between getting Democrats to vote and Republicans. A lot of Republicans live in, like, the suburbs or they live, like, out in the country. So whereas that you could get maybe 400 votes in one building, you would have to drive around for six hours to get that many Republican votes yeah. in the same area if it was ruled. Like upstate New York. It's it's red as red can be. Like I went up there for a wedding and I was talking to some of the guys and we got to talking about like like guns. And I was like showing them some of the stuff that I didn't like, you can have that. I was like, Yeah, like Oh, oh they got god. really strict gun laws up there. Yep. Oh my I'm god, a- I wanna move to floor talk to my wife. I'm a, Talk I'm, to my wife. I'm going to call them out by state. Here's the states where you can ballot harvest. New York, Vermont, Illinois, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Colorado, California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana. Well, and to, and to, and to kind of complement what you said about that, because I didn't know anything about that. Um, the reason I feel like huge metropolitan cities that can do that when you say go to a building, right, and get everybody in that is because they are re- are liberal and, you know, I hate using the word liberal because where it actually came from, but democratic, uh, the democratic government relies on people to be reliant on them. Yes. So when they make it so easy for you to go to your government building where everybody lives, maybe it's Section 8, maybe it's not, maybe it's just, you know, lower income. Um, they make it easy for you, and you're like, well, I don't even have to do anything. I can just submit That's this. the most dangerous thing, low-information uh, voters. Yeah. They have no idea, and you don't even know. There could be a single mom that's at home that has two or three adult children that live in in her apartment. They all get ballots. What? She's pro-Democrat. They don't give a shit. They're playing PlayStation and Xbox, and she's like, fill out the damn ballot. I'm going to turn it in for you. Right. Here's, and then here, she's influenced that. So It's not just the influence, and, and all those are good points. My, my biggest problem with ballot harvesting is ensuring the validity of each vote. How can you ensure that the ballot with that name on it is how that person actually voted? Yeah. You could just fill out yeah, as many as you want and turn it in. When you show up to a precinct and you fill out your card and you turn in your card, I know that is who you voted for. Mm-hmm. And with ballot harvesting, you have no idea the, of the validity of all those thousands, possibly thousands. Well, that's of votes. true. And and what goes, it's always in conjunction with something else. Like, oh, we're going to ballot harvest, and you know what? We're going to get away with, uh, we're going to do away with signature verification. So now they don't have a digital copy of your signature. So you just got, you know, Karen sitting counting votes, and she's like, Yep, that looks legit to me, and she runs it through, and it's and it's a vote. It's and I I saw a study. They did a poll like two weeks ago. God, it was Rasmus, Rasmussen did it, and they polled uh, Democrats on if they committed fraud during and it was anonymous during the 2020 election. Twenty percent said that they had committed some kind of fraud. They were mailing in votes 
to states that they didn't live in anymore. They were taking the votes of family members that had passed and filling them out and seeing them in. It's 20 percent. And there's the ones that 20 percent. That's right. And they admitted to it. Well, hey, let's let's get right into something super controversial and let's we can take a step back from from this and talk about voting rights in general. Okay. Do you think every person that born in America deserves the right to vote? Just well, do we just start right there before we get the ballot harvest. I mean I mean and you lose the ro- the right to vote if you're convicted of a felony just like you can't own a gun anymore. I think they should back I think it should be violent violent felons. I, I mean, I'm not going to go off on the tangent with the gun stuff, but as far as voting in all honesty, I'll take it back a bit. And I was like, if you have to take a test to drive a car, you should have to take a test to Ooh, vote. Like an IQ test that you're not a retard? You, not a whole lot of people know this. I, I'm, I'm going to guess you know this, but uh, it's okay if you don't. won't judge you. That's, that, that's not how America started out with yeah. voting rights. Do, do, you, do you know what the first thing? Not, you weren't natural birthrights to vote was landowners. Was, landowners is the only you had people. had land because then you, they you knew could, that you, could vote. And you lived there. Yeah, yeah, and, and landowners yeah. were being polarized. Right That's right. Only landowners. So this, so to say, not everyone has a right to vote. It actually isn't something un-American or isn't something really that controversial. That's actually how this country started. Was yeah. not everybody gets a right to vote. You had to own something in this land, which basically gave you skin in the game to allow you to vote. I'm not saying we go back to to only landowners yeah. uh, get a get a right to vote, although. Not, Ironically enough, would probably solve a lot of our problems, but I'm 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 with you. What you were just about to say, we have to. Yeah. If voting is so precious, anything that's precious can't be given away. That's right. You have to do something to earn or prove that your vote is is worth. Yeah. Is worth being is worth being counted. Well, a watered down version of that is a valid ID because it has your address. You might not own the property, but you live at a physical place in this area and you're lawfully allowed to vote and they want to do away and not you know because don't don't get me started on the that id it's, you, it's, it's the, racist it's the craziest thing in the world you have to have an id to do everything in this country you want about you, you want to buy alcohol everything at, get an id you they call it the soft bigotry of low expectations because the democrats <laughs> do not believe that black people are smart enough to go to the DMV and get an ID, and they're like, "Oh, well, That's it's crazy. expensive." Then you see that you see these people, and they'll, they'll go around, and they'll interview people, street interviews, yes, right. I've in seen like this. Brooklyn, yeah. in the Bronx, and they go and they ask the some like black guy, and he's like, "Do you know where the DMV is?" He's like, "Yeah, it's down past 13th and Broadway." That's I've never been in New York, right. but whatever. Right? Do you, you have get an my ID? point? I and he's like, an ID. "Do you know? Do you have a driver's license?" Yeah. yeah. Can I see it? Here, it's right here. Right. And they're like, well, what do you think about people? And they're like, that's racist as fuck. Like, right. for you to think that I'm too stupid to get a driver's license. Right. It's What's the classic case of fear-mongering? They're going to roll out the, the one old lady that doesn't have an ID and say, well, look, you've taken away her right to vote. But I do believe in rules that are good for the masses. Like, this is – there's too many consequences to have the greatest nation in the world not have – the their voices heard for their leader so i'm sorry for the one old person that may not have an id but for the greater good you have to have an id to vote it has to be secure it has to be secure if it's and not it's, secure it doesn't right. count and mail-in is not secure about is harvesting not. is not secure i'm not even down for the the machines the tabulation machines i think it should go back to paper ballots paper ballots you can't cheat if you have paper ballots you can't cheat yeah that's a good point. You have to vote in person unless you're in the military, and then you can have a mail-in vote if you're, like, overseas you're right, right. and you're in the military. Right. That counts. Yeah. Well, Even when I was a fireman, if I was on shift, if I was on shift, they'd have somebody cover my spot on the engine, and I could go vote. And I could come back. Yeah, same here. They, they really actually yeah. do, uh, con, you know. They want to make sure that you have the right to vote. Well, let's. We really jumped right into this. <laughs> well, I like what, what you said about taking the R and the D off the ballots. Oh, this. Uh, if you did that, 
You yes. first of all, you'd be called a racist. Right. So they'd be like, "Oh, you expect him to be able to read to vote?" So let me, let me, <laughs> let me take a step back to, to you know what, what I told him, and you know, you know, this is and this is you know classic locker room talk. Everyone, you know, at, at some point happens. We know this this country is not headed in the right direction, and everyone has their. If I was king for a day, like how, how do you how do you fix this? Like what what do you do to fix it? One of my uh, one of my opinions that'll never happen because of the monsters the political parties are is take the R and the D off of off of the the uh, the the person's name so that way you don't get to automatically know this person's a Republican, this person's a, a, a Democrat. You have to actually vote by figuring out what it is they stand for and if that's a vote you you want to send their way. That would revolutionize a lot of these. What do they call it? Yeah, down, down ballot votes. I agree. We just blindly vote for people because yeah, because I'm a Democrat. I've always been a Democrat. I'm going to vote Democrat. Well, I I, I agree with you 100. Say the same thing about Republican. But I have been guilty of down ballot, just because I just can't stand the liberal Democratic agenda. Their agenda. I'm absolutely against every bit of it. 100. percent But you know, like. If they're, you're voting on the comptroller, I don't know what a comptroller is. Right. But you know what that would stop. What? So, so if they didn't have an RD next to their name, then you just wouldn't down ballot it. You just don't vote. You, you would, yeah. You'd be like, I don't know anything about that, so I'm not going to vote. Can you, you not vote on one topic or one person? Yeah, you don't have, yeah. To, you you don't don't have to vote. You could just yeah. do the presidential. Really? Yeah. No. I don't think a lot of people know that. I don't. I, I felt pressure last time I voted was so like I don't know. If I don't fill this I, out right, yeah. Because well, I did my research, so I went through, and especially if you're in line or you go to the booths, they'll sit there and they'll tell you every person on there and what their plan is or what issues you're voting on. Of course, it's gonna be a little biased, but they'll still inform you a little bit. So that's well, why they I did. can't do it in the polling place. It was in it a has plaza to be outside, it was like way. It's, in the it's illegal line. for them right. to be in the actual ballot where they're doing the ballot where you're voting. So to talk about how to how to fix this. That brings us to really the, and oddly enough, kind of the beginning of, of the podcast, at least on the, uh, on the list of things we're to talk about. That's why I said we really shot out the, shot out the <laughs> I, I knew this was going to be a good one. It's such a polarizing well, awesome. uh, topic. There's so much, it's, you know, people get emotional about it and they should be. I want people to be emotional about this. Well, people it used matters. to be emotional about it, but not emotional in like a, like that uh, meme of the person that cries after Trump won. Right, yeah. Like, I like freak the ugly cry like no do you guys ever feel old though i feel like i'm like turning into the like when you were a kid you guys have like oh this damn country's going to shit oh know? yeah like, <laughs> like you're a fud you're the fud get on my yard <laughs> well if that's what it takes but i'm telling you gen z my 17 year old this next election it's gonna be the first time that he ever votes mm. and he is so far right in his beliefs and the things that he believes in because he's seen it firsthand, like the indoctrination stuff in the school system towards like the liberal agenda, like the LGBTQ stuff. Would and, you would you still and, love him if he was that? liberal? Of course. <laughs> he's well, just he wouldn't be allowed to stay the night at my house. <laughs> well, here, you have to sleep in the yard. I, I'm, I'm glad you said that because here here's what kills me is parents that will say, uh, you know, I'm taking my kid to vote for the first time. And I'll say, oh, awesome, you know, just just as a conversation, who, who's he voting for, you know? And 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 they'll say, oh, I don't I don't tell my kid who to vote for. Yeah. That's 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 his, you know, that's completely on him. Well, I, I I get what you're saying, but that's absolutely not not true. You should, as a family and as the head of your family, you have instilled morals and values oh, yeah. in, into your children. Morals and values is really essentially what we're voting for and what that elected official is going to steer this country in. You should absolutely influence your kids on who they should vote for. And especially yeah. at a young age when they may not necessarily understand the totality of the situation and what they're voting for. You should absolutely guide your children politically. Yeah, I, I agree. No, not uh, exactly. If Who's going so, to? Yeah, right. If you don't, <laughs> yes. someone else will. Without your vo without one hundred percent. If there's a vacuum in their life, right. the They're things filled. that they That's their right. ideals, then that vacuum will be filled. Most so I public talk schools. with I talk with my kids constantly. Both my seventeen and my thirteen is he's pretty savvy for a thirteen year old too, and and I've always told him I was like because I've been to their schools and I've seen the propaganda and there's plenty, <laughs> I'm not going to get into it, but everywhere. there's plenty right. of propaganda. And I talk to them about it and they're like, I don't, you see I don't any, like that stuff. You see any right-wing propaganda? Hell no, of course not. 
That's, that's, less that's not ironic. That's though, frowned that upon. You could only have one-sided it's frowned stickers upon. and And it's stickers. funny, too, is 80% of the parents at every school are probably going to lean more right than they are left. In, in all reality, depending oh, on what yeah. state you're in. Depending on the state you're in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like my kid, we would we would always go to Publix, which is a huge grocery store chain down here in Florida. And the kids would always be able to go to the cookie section and be able oh, to yeah. get a free cookie, get right? Get a free cookie. We did it every time we went grocery shopping, me and him. Well, once COVID hit, um, they naturally shut that down. And he goes, Dad, can I go to a cookie? I was like, no, buddy, because of the COVID thing, um, you can't get a free cookie. And he was like, wow. And I was like, yeah, the government, you know, that's how they're going to control all this, this this thing that they're pushing. And he goes, start I, with the cookies. He goes, I hate the government. I'm like, yes. <laughs> That's a good place to start. <laughs> no more cookies. That's right. They start with the cookies, son. And it only they goes start down. with the cookies. And it only goes, it down, only from goes there. down from there. That's right. <laughs> so I think everyone and well, I should say you would think everyone, but there's unfortunately some people who wouldn't agree with this and blows my mind. <laughs> don't think we are not no rephrase that i know we're not in a good place right now as a country and where we're heading most people will will agree with that so let's start let and let's and it always whether he has a direct impact on it or not that's just what happens when you're the leader of the country for better or worse you 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 have to take ownership of that so right now we have president biden and vice president kamala uh, in charge of of this country let me talk about a few things uh, that we have going on with this country right now there's so many things I could uh, I could hit on but we're going to talk about two things um, inflation inflation's a big deal it impacts everyone it impacts at the gas station speaking of the, of the supermarket it impacts you in the supermarket and inflation has been borderline out of control on here so, so inflation is supposed to be about two percent annually um it hit a record nine not a record it obviously got worse than that back in the great depression but in modern political history it's hit a record nine percent inflation uh under biden um border is obviously another one 5.6 million border patrol encounters that's three times higher under trump um, and there's no way to count how many more. That's that's encounters. So if you slip by without ever having an encounter with border which is patrol, most of them. Exactly. Who knows how many people uh, have actually come to this country? Which everyone, I don't care of what a party you affiliate with, should be a concern of of yours. Can I say something about the inflation? Yeah. Like, if you think about it, nine percent to a normal person, it doesn't mean anything. Nine percent. I will say that. I was you said nine like, and I was like, like it doesn't sound oh, well that's that's ninety one percent like you're still good but th- what you have to think of is in the last year twenty twenty three inflation has dropped from nine point one to five percent but that's not what matters it's the year over year that counts so what what you want to count on how we're doing and what's going on is you look at the consumer price index that is the culmination of multiple years since 2019 of inflation stacking on inflation stacking on inflation yeah. it doesn't go it might drop a couple percent for a year right. but nine plus nine is 18. that's right it's compounding doesn't so go away. it's compounding so uh in april 2021 groceries utilities and gas have increased by 20 percent it's crazy all other goods and services are up 13 percent um like, the wages aren't keeping up with it. I mean, I wrote a bunch of stuff down. My handwriting sucks, but that's what you have to <laughs> well, track is the com- consumer because that is the that is that interest compounding. And so they, that's how they mislead you. Like the administration, they're like, oh, you know what's her name, Jean Pierre? Oh, right. She's like, oh, it's down four percent in the last quarter. It's like, well, but it's up twenty percent from before your boss came into office. 
This is, I, I think sometimes when you, when you put it this way, and that's a good way to put it into in perspective, and when some people think, you know, like you, well, not, it went up 9%. Think about it like this. What it went up is basically what you can take away from your paycheck. Would you like a 10% lower paycheck? Ooh, no. That would be awful. Absolutely, absolutely yeah. not. But that's what you have. Your money is worth less because of inflation. So your paycheck got lower without, with, without your paycheck yeah. numbers getting lower. The power of the dollar. you got to spend is, the money. That's, that's what that's it's right. saying. The wages aren't keeping up with inflation or the consumer price index. It's okay. just not keeping up. So you make $75,000 a year, but now it instead of costing whatever your like ancillary things that you buy are $15,000 a year, now they're twenty or yeah. they're $25,000. But you don't make any more money. And, yeah. that's, and that's a vacation. That, that yeah. $5,000 is a family vacation. You're not going yeah, on anymore. Yeah, you're not going on that vacation anymore. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Jesus, we went to Cracker Barrel the other morning. Just me, my wife, and my three-year-old. 75 bucks. <sighs> 75 bucks yeah for cracker barrel <laughs> well you probably eat a lot to be honest with you. i did I, I did have the country boy special with an extra egg I, you got i encourage everybody to go watch this on youtube he is we're not we're not putting we're it's not we're not being light about it like he is a big man and it's impressive well there's other things you know that's it, the dovetail of that that your dollar's not going as far on and this is something everyone is upset about because it's something a little more tangible to them let's talk about home pricing now i pulled out home pricing here in orlando because this is this is our backyard but this is the same across the country um the median home price in orlando for 2020 was two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. so you take all the home sales and you and and you, you divide them the median home price was two hundred and seventy six thousand. the beginning of biden's presidency in 2024 it is four hundred thousand dollars for a home, in the, yeah. in the same city. Four our, years whole, later. Our, our house has almost like from when my wife she bought the house before we were married, and now it's worth almost two hundred thousand dollars more than it was when she bought it. And let's go into let's go into um, interest rates for home. When I when I bought a home just a few years ago, it was right around three percent. I believe last time I checked, it was seven percent. Seven yeah. percent for a, for a home it, loan. That's so add add a higher interest rate onto a more expensive house. I couldn't rebuy the home that I that I'm living in right now. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, I couldn't either. do it. No, that's crazy. I've got a buddy that's in finance, and he just sold a condo. And I want to say it was like a luxury, like three two condo, and he got I want to say around seven hundred for his condo. But he's going to rent now because it's cheaper to rent than to buy and wait for the market, the hostility to drop so that his money will will have more bang, you know? A million-dollar house used to mean something. Oh, yeah. yeah, It doesn't mean anything now. That's a million-dollar home. There's there's a lot of upper-middle-class homes here in Central Florida in a a neighborhood that goes for a million dollars. It blows my mind. Unless you're Donald Trump and then you lied because you – you inflated the value of your property. <laughs> I just Sorry. watched a, a short on Mar- a Mar- about that. <laughs> so if if you're not upset enough about money and uh, and what our country and its policies have done, and policies influence. Do we agree with that? Yes. Policies. Mean, you may not directly do this as a, as a president, but your policies influence everything we just talked about. Here's something directly that our government does that I really wish. Americans on the on both sides of the aisle would get more passionate about and it's just become a thing that we've accepted that America does that pretty much no other country does and that's foreign aid I'm a throw and I can't even go down all the numbers that I have written down here on foreign aid 75 billion dollars to Ukraine now you can be for or against the war that's a whole another topic but at the end of the day yeah the American tax that is your money as American taxpayer that you got absolutely no vote whether you wanted $75 billion to go to a foreign country. That's the beginning of it. $550 million to Afghanistan just just last year. Um, $245 million, this is this is a, a year. Yeah. Uh, and they go, they go up and down per year. But this last year, $245 million went to Colombia. Colombia is the third largest coffee producer in the world and as a top 20 oil product producing oh, yeah. company and we're sending them 250 Why? million Why dollars 
That's a good question. That's that's a question every voter should be asking their politician. Ten years Why? ago, a gallon of gas in Venezuela was twenty five cents. That's how much oil they have. Venezuela. But they well, they're ruined. Like they, the the new president has we, completely. We we don't get our coffee beans from Colombia. We no, do not. We, we, we do, do not. We, we do, do not support that. Uh, the um, speaking of Venezuela, a, co- a a country that we do not align we with have, politically. We don't, have, we don't even have re- public relations relationships with them. With them. <laughs> Somehow, though, we still managed to send two hundred million dollars to Venezuela. Um, we sent thirty-two million dollars to Canada in twenty twenty-two. Why did we send thirty-two million dollars to Can- Canada in twenty twenty-two? I have a theory about all of that. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll stop here in a second. Just, just hit a, a, a few more. One hundred twenty million dollars to Ecuador and Honduras combined. Four hundred million dollars to Sudan. Uh, who, by the way, is in the middle of a of a civil war and is rife, rife with war crimes. Just Google that. Um, I just I can go over and over. It, it 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 will absolutely sicken you. And again, regardless of party, um, Chicago is a shit show. We can absolutely agree on that. Yes, I would send two hundred million dollars to Chicago. Before I sent it to Venezuela. Yes. Why are we doing this? The reason that we're doing it is because we're trying to hedge, which is weird. We're trying to protect our hegemony as like maintaining our dominance, military, our financial dominance and our policy like dominance in the world. And the only way that we can do that is to pay these smaller countries because they don't want them to leave like our side. They don't want them to go join BRICS because BRICS is, that's the next thing that's coming. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're going to try to replace the reserve dollar, which is the U S dollar, which is used to buy commodities like hard commodities, like gold and gasoline and like oil. And so they're trying to replace the reserve dollar with, you know, whatever the next thing, the, the UN or whatever they have in China. Well, that's, but that's I think that that's the reason that, that we send this foreign aid is so that we're like, hey, we're still giving you this. We still want the petrol dollar to rule. We don't want it to be upset, like, because then we're not the superpower anymore. So let's talk. So if that's what we're looking to accomplish, let's look at the, the other superpowers in the world, China and Russia. Does China and Russia send foreign aid? I try. I, funny you mentioned that. I looked at that. I couldn't find. Now don't get me wrong. I'm sure they invest in certain countries that they want to, but no one does foreign aid the way we do. And because of of us doing that, are we any better? In your opinion, are we any better positioned in the world than China and Russia and these other superpowers? No, it's desperate. It, it, that's right. Yeah. It's the uniparty. It, it it's reeks the of, Republicans. Of, it reeks of and of, it's of the desperate. Democrats yeah. together yeah. trying to maintain the city on the hill. That's where we are. We're the city on the hill. And I would like push back just a little and say we're we're the only real superpower. Like there are regional hegemonies like Russia and China, but we're the only global hegemony that's left. What's a hegemony? It is it's a like a power like that it's you are a country like the US and you have like military, financial and like political stuff that you kind of push on to the smaller countries that are around okay. you. So you can be a regional hegemony or you can be like a worldwide one. And right now we're the only one that has influence. All the shit that China talks, we still have influence in China because of like trade deals and stuff. Yeah. Like they don't want to just totally back out and slam the door, but they're pushing to replace us as the city on the hill. Mm. I was talking to you right. like the last time I was here, it's called Thucydides Trap. And it's when a rising power is threatening to overcome and replace the sitting power. And it happens, however, in the past 500 years, it's happened 12 times. And what it strikes is a world war, is what happens. So what China is doing right now, if you look up the stats, they've been buying gold, billions and tons and tons of gold. That's why they're so interested in Africa. And what they're saying is that they're going to make the first... Uh, digital currency it'll be the EUN and it'll be ba- backed by gold on the gold standard again and there's not another country in the world that is on the gold standard anymore 
Not well, anymore. It's all fiat currency. And and I can say this because I've been around the world and have tried to leverage, you know, uh, America's wasta, if if you will, to get things done. All this that we've that we've bought, trying to keep our persuasiveness and power over the world, we don't leverage it very well as a country. We still go into all those countries that you think we've helped and spent hundreds of millions and some billions of dollars into. And when we, we don't go in there and tell them anything, we still ask politely to do anything and they tell us no whenever they don't want us to do it. So what have we really bought from that other than a massive deficit? Well, see it, it would be different if you were in charge because you actually understand and you don't, you don't have all this stuff going on in the background. Like you don't know these politicians, they're so backhanded and they've got so much stuff going behind closed door that, that we have no idea. And we would never be able to understand that, you know, like there's no telling all the money that's being sent to Ukraine. You don't think any of that's being laundered and sent back to Joe Biden to his son and his, his brother, Jim. No, they're clean because there's been no reports on the media of that happening. Yeah, so. all those LLCs and so. shell corporations, those are all 100% legit. I, have to I mean, or else they would report on it. Joe right? Biden, yeah. he, he lent his son 60 grand for a, uh, what's a Dodge Light or a Ford Lightning, the truck. Like, and he was just a payback. That $40,000 was payback. Well, <laughs> the. It's, it's so, I get so wound up about, about this foreign aid. It'd be one thing if we weren't ringing up a. We're sending this money to them via debt. We're racking up our debt to, 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 to stabilize or try to stand up or be in the, the, you know, the good corner of, of these countries, a lot of them that don't, even, that don't even like us. At all. And I'm trying to think. So basically, so basically it's, 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 and it's our tax money. So it's a classic case. I don't know if you've ever heard this term, taxation without representation. Yeah. Um, I, in fact, I think, like we, went, I think party. we went to war over that <laughs> one did. time as a country. And now we just stand back. We're like, yeah, we send other countries hundreds of millions of dollars that don't go back to us. And, and we're OK with that. Well, we still it's don't crazy. have any. We, don't, we still don't have any representation. We have the illusion of okay. representation. I have and, one question for you guys. Yeah. Where, when do we revolt? <laughs> and it's, it's a gen- because holy shit, January 6th, we were punished. I'm, true oh. Americans were punished and beaten down, and everybody was well, terrified. Well, Kamala Harris said that that was worse than 9 11 and. Uh, Talk about gaslighting. <laughs> she said it was worse than 9 11 and D Day. You know, but like, when do, when do we? When do we take over? Well, I tell you, there are some, there are some like, like little piles that are ready to light. You know, like if they actually keep Donald Trump off the ballot in Colorado and they do it anywhere else, that's a powder keg. Yeah, I think that's why this this next election. Is I think so, if Donald Trump wins so the election, that's a I think that's a bigger powder keg. Well, if there was ever a revolt in this country, it would be the far left against because I don't I don't want to fight on my I don't want to shoot people in my neighborhood. I don't want to do stuff like that. But they they're just not they're violent now. They can only get more violent. You know, they throw bricks. They don't respect the law. They don't respect anything. Well, to go, and, and I don't want to sound like a, a Trumpster because because I'm not. He, yeah. He, he he. But I'll I'll say this: you really can't roll out a policy in front of me that I that I disagree with with Donald Trump. And everything I'm bringing up, uh, Donald Trump also has has come out and said because he he does he's not a politician. He's a businessman. He wants to run this country like a business. So when I say none of this makes financial sense to me, that's the same thing Donald Trump says. He is why what's what's our return on investment to these countries? Exactly. And that's what I'm so upset about. Massive deficit. No return on our investment. It seems insanity, and that's that's one of the things you know that, that I, I do like about Donald Trump. G- go over to NATO. He doesn't understand why we spend so much money in NATO. What's our return on investment on NATO? NATO was formed because of the Soviet Union. Oh, sorry. You're good. You're good. Over the Soviet Union at the end of World War II, the North Atlantic Treaty. Right. He didn't even see why we were still in NATO. <laughs> Especially since we foot the bill for the entire thing. <laughs> so he got, so that, that reminds me. So he got into, you know, trouble, if you will, for calling out Germany. So 
what every country in NATO is supposed to contribute a certain percentage of their GDP into NATO. So it's it's, it's what everyone. So it's kind of a fair way to do it. Everyone is it's a percentage of your GDP. Germany has never donated their fair share into NATO, and Trump called them out on it, and they were so upset that you know a, a president would do that. And I was like, about time, about time, someone. Well, Called them out. I mean, the un- that's why the unit party. It's not just Democrats that don't like him. It's the old school, like conservatives. You know, the swamp. Like, yeah, the swamp. And he, you know, didn't do a good job of draining it. I think he surrounded himself with like people that weren't the greatest or whatnot. But when he saw them, like, I'm going to reinstate these tariffs on China. Why should they get everything? And we don't charge them. It's the only way to even the playing field. But then Joe Biden comes in. He undid everything that Trump did within a week. Everything was back to normal. Let me talk about tariffs real quick and explain this in case you don't know what a tariff is and why it's important. And this affected my family specifically. So the um, uh, uh, NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, is something that happened oh, in the, I want to say, 80s, late 80s. Yeah. Um, and it allowed it allowed specifically what how it affected my family is it allowed free trade from Mexico to the United States. And it, and it sounds good on paper. Well, my family uh, at that time was heavily in the cattle business. And if you're for fair wages and Americans earning a fair wage, we can't compete with the price of, of cattle with Mexico when they pay their cattle herders three pesos a day and then they fatten them up at the last second and push them across the border and, and sell cattle. Their, ca- their, their prices are going to be significantly lower than the American price. So how you bridge that gap is you charge a tariff on it, and a tariff is what is what basically makes it a an even an even playing field. Mm-hmm. Same thing with China. China can't have sweatshops with kids putting their Nike shoes together, and then not have a tariff put on it to even the playing field for with, companies in the U.S. Companies in the they US. don't even pay their workers. So tariffs, they have slaves. Tariffs are a good thing. They're yeah, a, they're a good thing for American companies. It evens the playing field and. And this is, is this will be a whole nother subject. I don't want to get too far into, but and that, but this goes against their their globalist mindset. They they want they want a globalist mindset. They don't want America to be the best in the world. To them, if everybody's doing good, then they want the world to do good. Yeah, it's almost I, like they want a new world order. <laughs> yeah. Bum, bum, bum. yeah. <laughs> so I, sorry to sound closed minded. I don't care if the world is doing good. I want America America to, first to do good. Uh, and I want my kids to have to have something to work for. I believe uh, and, it, and, yeah. and, and, in everything America. that you're saying right now. It's like I don't want it to become an echo chamber. But as far as like all this foreign aid that we give out, you know, the beginning of last year in. Well, it was actually 2022, December, Joe Biden, which he signed an omnibus bill. And I'm totally against omnibus bills. I think it's garbage, and it's a way to steal money from taxpayers. Explain that one to me. An, an omnibus, omnibus bill. bill is like they rolled in one. Or I should uh, say explain it to Tyler. The I, know, I know what it is. Explain <laughs> I it to don't. Like the Build Back Better. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll, I'll take that. You say like the Build Back Better thing that Joe Biden is going to do. It's like jobs for everyone, blah, 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 blah. But yeah. then you look into it. First of all, it was like 5,000 pages. And so there was like, uh, who was it? There was a congresswoman, I can't remember who. Anyway, she had a little wagon, and she wheeled it into Congress. Now, they got it two days before the vote. They're supposed to read 5,000 pages about what's going to be in this omnibus bill in two days before they vote on it. But then if they don't vote on it, they're the bad guys. They're like, oh, but there's money in there to, like, for oh, teachers. Oh, yes. Okay, I have heard of There's this money story. for, like, AIDS research. There, yeah. But guess what else? There's, there's money in there, literally, for gender studies in like Afghanistan or Pakistan, right. gender studies. You think that they're really yeah. doing gender right. studies in a Muslim state 
No, they're not. And it's just I don't know where that this, money goes. This <laughs> this country should be run like a business, and no business would you ever wheel in two thousand pages to a CEO and be like, "We doing this or not?" Or just you and Drew sitting here, and you go, "Drew, where's that two thousand dollars going?" He goes, "Don't worry about it." And you go, "Okay." No, right. you, you want to know where your money's going? Vote on it it's too. Insanity. Is they would just say the the Congress people that are in that are there that day, that are in the the in the auditorium or whatever, and they would just say. Yay, they take the yays and then the nay. Everybody's not there. And then they say, the yays have it. That's why Marjorie Taylor Greene started calling for floor votes. Now, if you call for a floor vote and you're a congressperson, it means you have to get up off your ass and you have to go to the lower chamber and you have to vote. Literally, you have to physically vote. And she started doing it every time. And she's like... uh She's like with Matt Gates and stuff. They're like the America First, uh, like Republican. They some call him MAGA. I don't know. I'm a big fan of Matt Gates, but I mean, she started calling for the. She wants the roll call, and everybody has to go, and everybody has to vote. Isn't and that their job? As a it, is their, <laughs> it, it is their job. But are they're, we asking they're so them, lazy? Are we just asking them to do their job? And this <laughs> is exactly this is trivial. Doing. Yes. That's that's that's, insane. That, that's that's where we're at. That's where we're at in this country, yeah. and that's why you know that's that's why I want to do this podcast. You know, it's they're, it's they're something's got to change. They're too busy with their lobbyists, you know, like or running for re-election. They, they yeah. want you know, like oh, we're fundraising. You know, doing everything. Lockheed but Martin is building this new plant, and we need to these regulations and the EPA, blah blah blah. Can you get them off my back, blah blah blah? Then you resign from Congress or you're done with your time there. And the next thing you know, you've got a job at Lockheed Martin and you're making six figures, seven figures. So M Mike Waltz is a congressman uh, out of Florida, Green Beret, served with him in Afghanistan. Great dude. You know? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, awesome. went, went, went to go uh, visit him at his, uh, at his, at his room, uh, his office up there in D.C., sat down with him. Um, it's just a great dude. Uh, yeah, you know, and what one of his complaints, or you know, is you know, I'm just talking to you know, when I got to talk. To, is is it what you thought it would be? You know, do you do you feel like you're doing a good job? You know, we talked to it for a while, but one of the things he talked about was that was a rude awakening for him was the percentage of time that he has to spend on re-election. The re-election is almost a nonstop job, and if you don't do it, then you will lose your job, and you won't, you know. Whether you're a good person or a bad person, it, you, you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna stand there and be able to move move the needle forward yeah. without re-election. We have to have some sort of um, re-election, you know, guidelines and rules. Like you can only you know start your re-election campaign. What about at, it's at, fundraising? At right, it's constant re-election, constant fundraising. What about government uh, government provided funds to each party where you each get this amount, do with it what you want. The, let the better man win. So that way, there's an argument for that. You know, um, I, you, you know what? I would take some of the foreign aid money and and put it reallocate and, put it, toward, it. and, and put it towards that. But I mean, so I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. I would do <laughs> then send money. I wouldn't add that. that as a cherry on top. Once they got your hand in your pocket, they don't ever take it out. Yeah. You know that you don't ever give the government more power See, ever. True. And that's what we keep doing. Like you want them then. Then you've got the federal government, and these uh, these now are bureaucrats that are making these decisions that, who aren't elected. They're selected by by like the executive branch. They're put into power. Now they're seeing, you know, the money, and it's like, well, we're gonna push this through, or we're gonna delay this. Like, how do you feel about this bill? You're gonna vote this well, way? Oh, this is a whole nother. You know, again, this is this, this could be a three hour podcast. But then you the, but then you get into you know super PACs and CPACs, you know, or uh, these, politi these political um, groups that basically kind of skirt these rules. So they raise money in, uh, in favor of, of an individual. Yeah. So, so it's not his money being spent. So when, they're, when it's capped or you know, when he only raised so much, you have these PACs acting as basically, I would, I would say shadow organizations, but they're not. They're they're out in the open, yeah. And they're and they're gonna they're gonna skirt those rules. So you have to do something about these packs as well, um, for how they spend money on the behalf of of, of an individual. Um, so to other than going down that long line, let's talk about you know this 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 election, the candidates we have. Uh, well, before we get to the candidates we have, what do you think? Do you think Biden's really gonna run again? <laughs> 
and he's old, he's senile. So someone described him as when he gets done speaking as as a Roomba. He turns into a Roomba. Too robot. Much. Oh, it's a Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis. Oh, <laughs> Shane Gillis has some funny political stand up. Yeah. Um, he says he's going to run again. Does the Does he run again? Can the Democrat Party allow him? He to says run again? he's going to run. In my lifetime, I've never seen an incumbent that they have a primary and he's in it. You know, like I don't even know if that there's rules about. I don't even. I don't know. Um, if what I want to say is, I want him to run. <laughs> It'd be the right. If, if you're he looking for change, runs, we will, the Republicans will definitely win. Like definitely, there's no way he can win. He is so his. I've got his approval ratings down here, and he is. They're astoundingly bad. They're really, really, really bad. Um, fifty-three percent disapproval, and that's uh, fifty-nine percent of the white voters. Disapprove 43% of non white. His job approval is the lowest that it's ever been for a sitting president at this point in his presidency. It's 37%. Wow. That's crazy. He's making history. Making history. He making is making history. history. And well, with the help of Kamala, because we know yes. what, a, what a stand up job she's oh doing. Oh, my God. She's been to the border. She's going to the border. She's been to the border. She went to like Dallas. Her Dallas isn't the border. <laughs> could you imagine? Could you honestly? Could you imagine if if this if if the media treated Biden and Kamala the way they treated Trump? Now I'll say this, and I've said it before. I don't have a problem, in a weird way, with how the media treated Trump. That is the media's job. That's why that's why America is so different, and and they they serve a good purpose. The media should look into everything and dig up everything on the most powerful man in the world. Yeah, I agree. But I'll say this. Once that's your new standard for how you treat a president and how how you're going to – how you're going to dig and how you're going to question, that's now your standard. And their standards immediately dropped to almost nothing when, when Biden came in. Could you oh, imagine yeah. – if Hunter Biden was name was Hunter Trump, what they would do and oh. the reports they would they would come out with and if the investigating reporting they would do. Don Jr. with the <laughs> laptop. Are you kidding me? So it would all be in prison. So I have a huge problem with not necessarily the media, you know, as far as, you know, them going hard on Trump. Well, that's, the, that's fine. But now that's the standard. Well, well, I don't have a problem with that either because he handles it well. Like as far as being a troop like. He doesn't always say the right things, but I don't think it hurts his feelings. I'm pretty sure he can ride a bicycle and he can walk upstairs without falling down. All, all these investigations, like I will say this, all these lawsuits, investigations haven't seemed to have hurt Trump. Almost the, the opposite it's effect. Opposite. Especially when every lawsuit against him continues to get dropped. Well, doesn't it look desperate? It does. I mean, you tried to impeach him twice. You said he uh, was the – there was the – uh, quid pro quo with the Ukraine, which actually Joe Biden is on tape saying that he wouldn't give you the money unless that prosecutor was fired. He said it. there's a tape of him saying it. Could you? Uh, could if that was a Trump, yeah, I I agree with you 100. percent If it was Trump, right, he would be in prison right. from the very impeached. from the very beginning. But you've got the, the two, Russian dossier, two impeachments. Yeah, you've got the fake FISA warrants. You've got the Steele dossier. You've got all that stuff, and now. You've got all these lawsuits. You've got Georgia, Florida, Washington, D.C., and New York, and they just keep going after him and going after him. And go like, we were talking about Mar-a-Lago. Like, they think that Trump is the one that valued Mar-a-Lago? That's not how real estate works. Right. He's not the president. <laughs> he doesn't get to just say, it's worth $1 billion. Like, he doesn't get to say that. It gets appraised. Yeah. I just don't get it. And then you look at her, Letitia James, she's in the courtroom. And, you know, there was a summary judgment against him right off the bat saying he had to dissolve his co his company in New York City. And they were going to liquidate his assets. That was a summary judgment before any proof was offered that he did anything wrong. Right. It's and so he's up there, like, with the appeals and stuff. And you see Letitia James sitting in the gallery and she's just got this smug fucking smile on her face because the judge is like a like a Democrat appointed judge and he doesn't like Trump. And you can tell he's like laughing and giggling and not acting like a judge. There's no decorum. And like as far as the 
the officers of the court. It's it's ridiculous. Right, and I I read an article which I'm probably going to butcher on this, but the judge's aide on this he I can't remember her name. She's normally so far away from the the judge. He moved her right next to him and consults with her on a on a consistent basis about you know about the the case and she will interject herself and in, into the judge's ear constantly so it's 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 just unprecedented now if it's you've got, seen it's the like, video it's like, it a two on, like that it's a two-on-one you know kind oh, of yeah. situation it's the political hunt this has turned into is just it's it's unprecedented well look it's at them going after they they are indicting his attorneys now they are they indicting people that had opinions that supported Trump or that had opinions about J6. There is everybody, anybody who was on the wrong side, their wrong side of history is being indicted. Look at Enrique Torrio. He got 30 years for January 6th and he wasn't even there. Let's talk about January 6th for just a second. And oh my gosh, this is a, a rabbit trail and a half that I'll, I'll, I'll have to it cut off in, in a couple <laughs> seconds. But I, I, after the, the, uh, the Colorado, you know, ruling came down to take Trump off the ballot because he incited a, a riot. Insurrection. Insurrection. I went. I went back and looked at the the speech on January six. I honestly don't know where they're getting it from. They they act and other people who just who just you know the echo effect of, yeah. and just say, oh, yeah, what he did on January six, what he did on January. What did he do? You can't. There's not a. If he did, you would see the sound bite. There's not a sound bite of him going. Go storm the Capitol, because that's what it sounds like he he did. If you listen to yeah. everything they're saying, he he didn't in, tell me how he incited an, an insurrection. Well, the Democrats play the telephone game. I tell you what really happened, and when you tell Tyler, he it comes off a little different, and then he goes over and tells Magnet, but it's a little bit different. And by the time it all gets back to me, it's a completely different message, because that's the the whole low inform like. They watched the corporate news, which lies constantly. All they do is lie, right? So it's, I mean, there's nothing. He's never even been charged with, not one person that was arrested on January 6th was charged with insurrection. Not one. Not one. Although the, the judge in Colorado said that, in their opinion, he committed uh, insurrection. In his opinion, without a trial, right. it's a violation of due process because you get discovery and you get, you know, all the time. It's just it's mind boggling. It it's it's mind a kangaroo boggling. court. And it's, it's, like, it's a kangaroo court. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a third world country, like a banana republic. Like 100 percent. That's why I asked you guys, when is the tipping point? When is it? What is it? What I, does it take? I, I think to answer that question, uh, really, I think it hinges on on the next election. It really does. Next year is going to be wild. On, it, This is why this podcast to me was important to do. This and whether Joe Biden runs again, I don't even. I don't know how he runs again, but I don't see how he he doesn't because he's a sitting president. If he wants to run again, I don't. He see would how, have to. He would have to. I don't see how he can't pull himself out. Um, you know, and you know, would and I don't see how he goes with a, a different running mate and doesn't double down on Kamala Harris, who has worse approval ratings than him. <laughs> She's the worst. Oh my gosh! So. So we so we know what the other side has the offer, and we went down the list, you know, of, of inflation and you know our border problems. Uh, that's that's what that's that's what they have to offer. It's it's now historically what what they've done. So what does the other side have to offer? So let's let's talk about that real quick. Okay. Let's let's talk about the what the what the Republican Party is putting forward. Obviously, uh, we can talk about Trump a little bit. There's no need to. Go down. He had a presidency. He, we know what he did. That's right, because he, he's a he's he's a, he's a known quantity. So there's really no need to really go go yep, over what what Trump has to offer. We know what he has to offer. Um, we're here in Florida. Uh, I thought DeSantis would be would be a good uh, alternative because I thought he had very similar policies, but was a little more polished. But he's not doing well. It's his campaign. What What do you think? What do you What do you think? What do you think? On paper, he, he looks like he, he should be Amazing. In, the, in, in the mix. Why do you think he's not doing well? I think I think it's all the fault of his campaign, his campaign manager. He should fire all of them. <laughs> his messaging is coming off wrong. He's coming off weak. He And, like, when he would give a speech here to, about something in Florida, like a hurricane or something like that, very articulate. He knows what he's talking about. I mean, Jesus, he was a 
he was a JAG. He was right. a JAG. He was a naval was a, JAG officer. Yeah, sure was. And he yep. was uh, embedded with SEAL Team 1 in uh, Iraq. Yep. And, uh, like, I'm a huge DeSantis fan. Great guy. Before he launched his campaign. And then it was just like, he gets up there and he gets, like, frazzled, kind of. And, and he's doing, you know... It's not like he's doing everything wrong. Even the things that, he's I, second I, that, in the that, poll. That, that I think he does right. I know it's like a distant, distant, distant second. Like, well, and then I think he's the, the 16% Haley. and then she's right behind Right. Him. There's Nikki Haley just had a bump. Um, so it's neck and neck between those two. We'll get to Nikki Haley here in a second. I thought when he debated Gavin Newsom was a great move on his part. And yeah. I think he I think he, he, he did well. You know, so why is he doing so much? Why why did he do so much better against Gavin Newsom than he is? Well, he was uh, allowed to. Trump? He was able to use the Florida versus California model comparison, which he specializes in. So he can talk about Florida all day long. Yeah, it goes but back being, to being better than California. Yeah, but after every that, every place is better than California. <laughs> after that, once you take like okay, but now not Northern California. You guys are great. Oh, I like NorCal. <laughs> yeah, make, make that make that little plug. NorCal is California. But I mean, I just think, I think his his campaign team is just. It's almost like they're sabotaging him. Well, well, let me throw this at you. Do you think do you think he's done? Because so many presidents, you know, that we have were, were not the were not the leaders or, or the front runners, you know, going into an election. You know, they always you know, almost came out of no- Biden was doing horrible. You know, Hillary Clinton was the front runner. Do you think it's salvageable? Well, you it, it touches on something that you talked about earlier, and it's campaign like finance, right? And so his super PAC that was backing him, the main contributor, the Koch brothers. Yep. Guess who just backed out? Oh, did they? Did They're they? no longer supporting his campaign, or they dropped it to like a million dollars. Right. So you if he have doesn't have money. money to campaign, right. because what he went to Iowa and he went to these 29 stops or something, like that was going to be his way of out campaigning Donald Trump was to hit every single district, every single one. And right. I think he spent up all the money, and he's not getting the results in the poll. I mean, yeah. he's, for being second, he's not even close to Trump. Oh, not even what's, close. What's and the not to just like? be like, Trump, Trump, Trump. But, I mean, let's. it's not even a fair fight right now. Are they, like, over 50%? Yeah, can you look that up? Well, I'm going to bring up Nikki Haley. Can you yeah. look that up on, uh, on, on your phone? Uh, next up, Nikki Haley. Now... I'm a big fan of Nikki Haley when she was the uh, uh, the ambassador. ambassador to the UN. Oh man, she was great. She she uh, she spoke her mind. She did that under Trump. Uh, she carried the American flag, which shouldn't be a, a, a positive in her corner. It should be that's your job. Yeah. But so many people don't, and they're you know an American. You know they just apologize about America uh, all over the place. So in her past performance. You know she's she's done she's done very well, but uh, and it seems like to me, tell me your opinion. I feel like she's getting propped up a lot though. I hear a lot about Nikki Haley that I don't hear about DeSantis or or anyone else. Yeah. Do you think? And if she is, why do you think she's getting propped up? It, it's the it's the old school Republicans like the the new Republicans are. They're an, like Matt Gates and Marjorie. They're anti-war. Like everybody's sick of the. I mean, Afghanistan was twenty years. Like yeah. these never-ending wars. And how much treasure and blood do we have to spend overseas? Right. For that. Right. And and for it to just go back to that. And and so I think they kind of think of her as a war hawk. Like she's just gonna the never-ending wars. Like, you know, like it's been going on all year. But Venezuela is talking about annexing part of Guyana and so you have if you're a politician and and you're for that or you're for Ukraine why in God's name are we sending money to Ukraine and and you want to send aid to uh, Hamas for the Palestinians when they all they do is take the money and they buy weapons or they you send them like pipes for water and stuff, and they send them into rockets and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look at that because I see it says December 26, which is very, very current in this in this latest polls, and it's a Rasmussen report. So that's um, Trump's at 20, uh, 51 percent. 51. Uh, Haley is in second, if you want to call it that, at 13 percent. 
Matt is a distant second. Like, oh, is she second now? That's what, and it says, mm. and it has as DeSantis at nine. Oh my God, it's changed since I got here. I was oh, looking yeah. at it on the That's way here. Than mine. And this one says yeah. updated today. Yeah. Let me see this. Just just to give you, because there's all sorts of different polls. And I mean, they're they similar, but they're different. But yeah. And this and this one has, this poll has Trump at 61%. And then it has you know, DeSantis and, and, and Nikki neck and neck at, I didn't, at 11%. He's in, in, in single digits on Rasmussen? It's It's... There, again, there's there's a lot of time. And if he loses the money, he's out. That's right. You can't you can't campaign if you don't have any money. But truth be told, I, I don't. Other than you know Nikki Haley, you know with her UN time as an ambassador, I don't know a, a lot about her. I did you know you mentioned her being a war hawk. I, I looked that up. You know she she is pro war. I'm pro war. Um, but well, you're a warrior. <laughs> I, I, would, I would hope that our warriors are pro right, war. Right, right. Yeah. But as as an American, I'm not against I'm not against the wars that we are in. Hindsight being 2020, we can we can say mistakes were made. I do believe at the time we had to make those decisions. You know, hindsight's always 2020 again. I think we I think those decisions were made with good intentions and with hopes of a of a different outcome. That that, I that agree. just, that, that just not, didn't come. I'm so, not anti-military or I wouldn't even say right. anti-war. I'm just why do we have to be interventionists right. Right. all the time? But now, but since we've, but since we now have that recent data, I, I agree with you. It, it's it's not working out. Um, if something has to be done war-wise, let's let's go do a, a quick strike, send a message, and then come home because rebuilding countries in the Middle East just isn't. And that's and that's not something we're not good at because I hate to say it, that's something. They're not good at. We didn't. War, we didn't lose the war in Afghanistan, in the United States. We absolutely annihilated the Taliban yeah. and Al Qaeda, and we gave the Afghan people an opportunity to have their own country, and they absolutely they, they lost that yeah. war. So, well, it's the same with the the Hamas and the Palestinian in the Gaza Strip. They voted for that government. You know, the, the Israelis right. gave it to them. And now they're getting what they voted for. And then for. they're like, this is what we voted for. Right. Which is so important for us. Yes. We, we, we have a decision to Exactly. Make. If people don't understand that, you, it's like, don't California my Florida. <laughs> One of my favorite sayings. <laughs> right. Well, maybe I should say, go, don't Southern California my Florida. So, so, I, know, it seems like I, make this, I see this distinction. <laughs> the, uh, so after Nikki Haley, we got, we got this guy who's not doing well in the polls. And, and with according to this that you just showed me, it's got him at 1%. Which is crazy to me, because it has Cr Christy, who's we're not even going to talk about, at nine percent. What? That's what it's got. <laughs> and and so let's let's talk about this guy, Vivek Ramaswani. Ramaswani. You did it. I did. First it. try. I know. It's like Vivek. a kickflip, and you right away first try. <laughs> Vivek Ramaswani. Um, we got we got some clips of him that uh, that that we'll we'll pull up. When I go to the comment section of Vivek. I had, to, I had to go look him up because there's so many comments about him being a a, a, sor, you know, a, a, a puppet of Soros. And so I had to you know, look up, well, why, why are they saying that? Here's the origin of that. When he was going to college, he applied for a minority grant, that a Soros minority grant that gives you $50,000 to go to college if you're an American minority going to college. He applied for it. He got it. He got $50,000. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. He applied for a grant for fifty thousand dollars as a college student. I don't care where you get. I don't care who's going to give you that money. It's crazy, and that was when he was in college. Yeah, he's he's that. That's does he agree? Does he agree with doing that now? Or did yeah, he he. he, he I, well, I, he's, I saw he's some very upfront. He's yeah. very upfront about it. And he's very unapolog unapologetic about it. And well, it's the not same like he's I a said. Soros like well, prosecutor. Like, right, right. They they make it sound like he has close ties. Yeah, to Soros, Soros didn't give it to him. He applied for it and got it. Soros it was a has fun. No yeah. idea <laughs> yes, it was a big slush to. fund. Yes. Okay. Right. Then, all right. All right. All right. And he's called a Soros puppet because of that. That's cr that's a lie. That's crazy <laughs> to me. Here's here's the other thing where I. I, I understand a little bit more why, why people would have a problem with him, and he's he's a, he's he's a CEO of a pharmaceutical company. Yes. Or that's you know, or he was. That's where he made his money. It's where it's where he made his. He's money. a billionaire, and you know, so you know, no one trusts big pharma. It's true. But I'm not going to hold that against him for for making money in a capitalistic society, running a you know, a profitable business. Like I I get it. I mean, I'm not a, the biggest fan of the pharmaceutical companies, but yeah. like that's not to me going to. 
be like, oh, oh, he's the CEO of the pharmaceutical company. Mm. Out, out with that. Well, I think they kind of all get lumped together. It goes back to like the the pandemic of like people being on oxy. That's when they think of it, they're like, that's the pharmaceutical company. Well, let me ask you get you, people addicted to pain pills and then you yank them away from them. Let me ask you guys this: your opinion on? Do you think? Remember the old school scared conservative mindset was, I, I love Trump, but if he runs, it's going to break the party in half and we're going to lose. Do you guys think that's the case now, or do you think that not only are his numbers showing it, but all of us together, you know, like if he wins, people are going to hate him so much to where they don't vote or they don't vote. I right. think that there are still a lot. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, was, I, I got two answers to that. One, personally, I, I would like to see someone else because he is so divisive. Mm. But if he wins the, you know, the candidacy for the Republican presidential you know, party, I have no problem voting for that guy. Okay. I. I think that he is divisive is what we need when you're there's an when argument you're, when that. you're eating steak. You don't cut it with a, a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> you cut it with a knife and it divides that steak into the pieces that you want. Pick a side, motherfuckers. A part of me is. And even though I just said that and this is why I would vote. He, I do think he's a necessary evil. Yeah. Like now I would like I would like his VP pick. To be the one to be the mixer. In his like cocktail, yeah, that like makes it more palatable, yeah. So you can still get a buzz. Who 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 do you think would be a good? Oh, man, would, I big, wish it was Vivek, but his he's polling so low right now. But what about I think the chick? He would be a yeah, wasted. Saying, maybe Nikki Haley might be a good a VP wasted for him. asset. I mean, maybe he, in the cabinet, maybe right. he could be in the cabinet. And people say Nikki Haley, but I tell you what, I know a lot of guys that are hardcore Trumpers. And they say if he picks Nikki Haley, they're not voting. They will not vote really? for her. They, and, they what's, just, and what's the reason? Because it's all the all her ties to the old school Republican Party. That's no. she, they are so adamant. I think I think about the way that the things that she's she's done in the past. They're they're totally against it. They're like I won't vote. So here's here's it's a two minute clip, but this to me is really what shows how good Vivek is at debating. And how professional he can be, but he'll also say things that he's not scared to say that politicians normally, you know, dance around real quick. And this was an inner, this was a question that an L G uh, B T Q L M N I Q R P reporter had for him. And I'll pause it. He did a good job of standing his ground, but then, but then said, "Hey, what's what's your opinion?" So he doesn't automatically just shut it down. Just shut her down yeah. and 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 say you're wrong. And it's, it, that was a, that was a good move on his part. But then he lets her talk. Then he goes into a, a better explanation of of his stance. I'll, I'll stop it there. He, he does a great job of answering it, having a firm answer for it, yeah. but not not creating a divisive fight you know, just, for that. You lady. just use logic, just straight logic, right? And you know, doesn't say, "Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against one," but here, yeah. but here are the here are the problems I have with that. And to me, that's very presidential. Yeah, 
and someone who has an opinion, not scared to say it, but can say it in a way that doesn't piss everyone off. Well, I would I would say that it, it almost sounds like you're law enforcement, right? Yeah. So a big thing in law enforcement is de-escalation. Right. So <laughs> he's not in her face. Right. He's not telling her she's wrong. He's like he's got his hands up in an open. You're way. right. In that he's conversation to her, and she's totally disarmed. And, and, and in disarmed. that conversation, though, if you had to pick the aggressor of it. If you had to pick one, it's her. Oh, She's the 100%. one like trying to get he, the tone that he uses. He's even handed. He's even keeled. He's got a message. It's not overbearing. And it's acceptable and palatable to her because he's so like disarming. And that's a hot that's a hot button topic. That's yeah. a hard one. It's to do hard. Oh, my God. I couldn't have that argument with someone. No. Because I've been like, well, yeah, I don't believe that, you know, my kids should go in the bathroom and see women with penises. Like that's the way that I would have said it to her, and <laughs> right. that would have yeah. been the end. Right. That would have been the end of my campaign. You would have been a big end. The end of my campaign. Well, he's. I don't want to sound, you know, like all like I'm all in on Vivek. What I'm trying to say is, I had a hard time even picking a clip. He has a bunch of good of uh, you know, rebuttals and the way he handles that. So that's not that's not a one off. What I'm saying is. I just would like to correct the record on it. There's a lot of people saying this and saying that about him. And the more I looked into it, and this is what I want people to do. Don't just parrot someone else's opinion. Be like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I don't like him either then. Go exactly. look right. at who the candidates are and what they stand for. And that's what you should base your opinion on, not the comment section on, on YouTube. Well, he's not, he's not a politician. That's why nobody knows him. And, like— Trump was famous before he became president, so he's always that had a brand. There's always yeah. the Trump. Brand. I mean, he was in Home Alone. But he does. He, <laughs> well, like, I mean, he stole. We kind of steal. We stole from his playbook. You want to get noticed? Get noticed. Grab her exactly. by the pussy. Now everybody exactly. knows who Trump is. If you didn't know who Trump was already, my generation did. The, he had the TV show. He was in movies. Right. But you know, but I think rappers Vivek rapped is, about him all yeah. through the '90s. I think Vivek <laughs> is honestly a cleaned up. Like hard line, like nice succinct version of Donald Trump. Especially after that turning point clip that I showed you, where he's telling Van Jones, he's like, you know what, just fuck off. Yeah, he's he, like, he you, can. You call me a he's got a dog? switch. Fuck you. He's got a switch. And I like that, but yeah. but he could talk circles around. Like if he debated Trump, yeah. I think Trump would lose that debate. Well, I, that's that's that is what I'm excited about i'm calling him out this this next year you know he will have Cage to be, match. he will have to be you know this you know some of these lower polling people are gonna fall off to the wayside and we'll have a top three and you know and those top three and top two or top three people are gonna have to stand on stage and, and when somebody's down in those numbers like someone like DeSantis, when he's down in those numbers he has to heavily rely on a great debate to bring him back up yes right? like overnight like and, but that's all it takes you know yeah. and you know for him you know, it, it, you know i don't think he's got the charisma not to maybe if he had started at the top and kept going up right but from where to come out of the gutter not to be harsh but like where he's at now is extremely low and i think he's got uh, it'd be a hard especially if you're your people that are paying for your campaign are backing out and pulling out because it's like you know you're bet you're betting on a losing horse yeah it's got to be a, right. a time yeah. when you're just like okay cut our losses like he would have been better off Trump could have changed his residency to New York City. I would have loved to see him as the VP. Then we would get eight years of him as president and four years of him as VP. Yeah. I think he would be a great VP because he yeah. would be the mixer in the mixed drink. Donald Trump DeSantis. I think that would have been an unbeatable ticket. But now I think he is a like a broken leg. To take him on now, I think, would damage like Trump's like no. his image and his campaign. Well, you got something? I was going to wrap it up yeah. with uh, with uh, so in this podcast, you know, this was a heavy topic. This wasn't necessarily negative by any means, but you know, it, it leaves you with a lot to think about. Maybe maybe two rides to work for this one. You He's know? right, man. but but so Drive slow, you can get it. <laughs> but we always do the dumbass cop of the week or dumbass something, or we just try to tie it in. And and so in the spirit of this and politics and just kind of speaking freely, um, I wanted to bring up the fact that. LAPD, by the time this is out, they will be on the road, Has, as far as I understand, has just graduated its first uh, academy class with uh, non-citizen law enforcement officers, which um, should be appalling to everybody. It should be appalling to the fucking cops that put in to be a cop 
And I'm lo- I'm looking at these kids, these people that are telling me, oh, I got turned down because of this. And I'm like, you got turned down. We can't even get cops in the fucking door. And <laughs> you should be appalled that good Americans are applying to be police officers and are getting turned away. But because of liberal policies, people that aren't even American citizens are getting the jobs. And then on top of that, if you're not a cop, cool. As a constitutionalist, you that should horrify and terrify you because I know as an American citizen, I'm going to be, if I have to take away your constitutional rights, I know what that entails. I know how devastating that is. And, right. and, and I know so I can calibrate what I'm about to do. Somebody that doesn't care or even know or value our, our constitution is, is, is going to, they're going to be the ones policing you. It's insanity. When you told me that before the podcast, it, it, it blew my mind. Well, they might have even looked down on your beliefs. Yes. You don't know, depending on what country they come from. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people argue, you know, the military thing. But me and Brent both agreed, you know, I think service in the, in the military is a great way to get your citizenship. But you're not upholding exactly. constitutional rights and can take constitutional yep. rights away from citizens. This non-citizen can. It blows my mind. I don't. And, and we always laugh at an ending note. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to call Brent out because Brent was trying to help me. And, and a lot of the times I find the dumbass, you know, cop of the week and I'm always bitching. There's no, there's always dumbass cops. And he goes, <laughs> I got you. And he sent me, he goes, dumbass of the week. He goes, harsh. But, and this was a video of a firefighter getting off the rig. You can see the blaze. This is a structure fire. This guy is going, he's about to do his job and be heroic. And he trips. He trips on like step number two. <laughs> he eats Hard fall. it. Hard fall. And Brent was going to use that for dumbass of the week. It was a stretch. I it was, actually we I, have nothing. I've done that. <laughs> we have nothing. I had I, a, you had a ripping fire and I'm laying the hose out and I'm walking across the grass and there just so happens to be a two foot hole in the grass and it's dark <laughs> and I stepped in it and ate shit. I lost the whole load off my shoulder. Everybody's laughing at me. The house on fire. <laughs> the only redeeming factor is I saved the dog in that fire. Right. So I look like a dumbass, but I saved the dog. Way to, way to turn it around there. The <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you and Tyler have something in common. Tyler also saves dogs on the job. Oh, <laughs> you know what's funny? <laughs> As I was making that reel, and my buddy at lunch, I was like, I'm just making a reel for my friends and family. I'm just, that's all I'm doing is making a reel. I saved a dog at work. I kept it. It's, uh, it's gay. And, <laughs> and it, my buddy goes, I was eat, sitting with two dudes, two buddies at work at lunch. And one of them goes, dude, if you post that, it's going to be the most viral video ever. And my other buddy goes, if you post that, you're a homo. (laughs) (laughs) Decisions, decisions. (laughs)